Welcome to If Numbers Could Talk. My name is Keelan. If Numbers Could Talk is a part of the Thinkering Group. You can find us over at thinkering.space. You can also find at Thinkering Space the Thinkering Talks podcast, the Exofathom podcast, along with the Plank Talks with Joe. When you get a chance, please check out our merchandise. We have merchandise on our website, thinkering.space, as well as merchandise at teespring.com slash thinkering shop. Please visit, grab a t-shirt, grab a mug. We'll appreciate it. And when you do, feel free to let us know that you've decided to become a member of any of our fan clubs. Here to If Numbers Can Talk. What we like to do is go over numbers. We go over statistics, things that have already happened that have been annotated and can be looked back over. Things that can prove someone um, confident or not as confident as they thought they were going to be about a subject, about a favorite athlete, a movie. That is what we'll be doing here at If Numbers Can Talk. And what I always request of anyone is take the time during the live, after, when you're listening, visit our YouTube, visit visit our website, thinkering.space, subscribe, check out some merchandise, and please leave us some feedback. We're always open to know how you feel about it. And as our community, we are always open to taking the suggestions that you give us. On If Numbers Could Talk today, what I'll be discussing is right in line with what is going on in the sports world this week. This is the first finals, I believe, if I can, the first championship that I can think of of 2020. The NBA finals begin tomorrow. So I will be covering the two teams that will play in the NBA finals tomorrow. And the way I'll be covering them isn't as I typically do, where I'm pitting one player versus another. What I'll be doing is I'll be putting the entire franchise history versus the other franchise's history. For those who are not involved in the basketball world and are not aware, the 2020 NBA Finals will be tomorrow, Wednesday, September 30th. And the two teams playing will be the Lakers and the Heat. That's right, guys. The Miami Heat and the Los Angeles Lakers will be playing in the NBA Finals tomorrow. So let's get started on these numbers, why don't we? The Los Angeles Lakers were, well, there's a little bit of a backstory before I really get too deep into the numbers. I want to make sure I explain the NBA did not start as the NBA until 1948, 1940, no, 1948, not 1946. 1946, the NBA was created as the BAA. And in 1948, it became the NBA. Before that, it was the NBL, the National Basketball League. When the BAA and the NBL merged is when we got the NBA. So the Minneapolis Lakers started in 1947. However, the Los Angeles Lakers, as we know them today, as we love them today, as we have grown with them, the history that we are really aware of, right? That began in 1948, while the Miami Heat, they're a fairly new team in the terms of going against a 72 season team. They are a 32 season team. The Miami Heat were created and began their journey in the NBA in 1988. I can name a couple of other great things that happened in 1988, one of which namely being my birth. So it looks like we, anyone who's in my generation, we've grown from boys to men with the Miami Heat. Whether you are a fan or not, that is simply how the timeline pans out. Now, throughout their tenure, the Los Angeles Lakers have only been in Los Angeles. The Minneapolis Lakers are not the Los Angeles Lakers. Let's make that clear. But the history is the Lakers that we do understand. But the Los Angeles Lakers have only been in Los Angeles. They played for a while in Inglewood, but that is still considered Los Angeles County. 
don't fight with me. I didn't create the zoning. I'm simply explaining it from what I understand. The Miami Heat have only played in Miami their entire tenure. Now, I also want to make it clear, it's going to seem like I'm jumping into the deep end right away, but I promise you I am not. The Lakers have a total of 16 titles, 16 rings won by the Los Angeles Lakers over the 72-year tenure for their team. The Miami Heat have only won three rings in their tenure as the Miami Heat at since 1988 in their 32 seasons. Now, let's balance this out a little bit. Let's talk about playoff appearances. Before we talk about losses and best seasons and who has the most MVPs and all of the legends, we're going to get there. But playoff appearances is incredible if you ask me for both of these teams. Now, the numbers are vastly different. They're just, they don't look the same. But the percentages, if you look at it close enough, are nearly the same. The Miami Heat have been around for 32 years, as I said. Of those 32 years, the Miami Heat have made the playoffs 21 times. 21 out of 32 playoff appearances is not bad. That that does not mean they made the finals each time. That doesn't even mean they made it out of the first round, if I'm being totally honest. However, of their 32 seasons open for business as a franchise, The Miami Heat have been to the playoffs 21 times. That is pretty impressive. Now, the Los Angeles Lakers, for their 72 years, their 72-season tenure, they have made the playoffs 61 times. Now, again, putting these teams in the place that they belong, a 72-year tenure versus a 32-year-old, 32-year tenure, that's like putting my experience up against the experience of Dare I say Donald Trump? He's in his 70s, right? Not to say that one would know more than the other, but one has definitely experienced more than the other. So at 72 years, 61 playoff appearances is pretty crazy. You know, Um, if you were a 72 year old, that means 61 years of your life. um, Say 61 years of your life, you made a million dollars. Let's call it that. So that's an easy 61 million, you know, for sure. Right. And if you're the Miami Heat and you're only 32 years old and you made the playoffs 21 times in your tenure, in your life, then you have 21 million for your 32 years to show. I think both would be in very, very good shape for their age and for their accomplishments. Now, let's talk about finals losses. This is where even I had to take a step back and say, I, right now. If you are a Laker fan or if you just followed the NBA long enough and you love your team enough, then you don't like the Lakers and you loved to see the Lakers just not doing well for the last couple of years. I'd say seven years. So about six or seven of these years here. Or or excuse me, six or seven of the years that the Lakers did not show up in the playoffs were just recent which means before the last decade, the Lakers made the playoffs all except two, maybe three times the entire time the Lakers have existed in Los Angeles. That is insane. However, it shows something is going right in the front office. And I think the same in Miami. And we know who they have down there, Pat Riley. He did a great job when he was here as a Laker coach and as a Laker player. So, well, yes. So, Here's what I found most interesting once I got to this point. The L.A. Lakers have 15 finals losses for a total of 31 uh, final appearances, but 16 finals wins, 15 finals losses, adding another finals appearance as of tomorrow. The Miami Heat have only lost two of their finals appearances. With their three that they won, that makes a total of five total, uh, excuse me, five finals appearances. So the Lakers have been in the finals one year less. Well, as of this year, the exact amount of years that the Miami Heat have been in business. 
that can be a little intimidating if I am someone that works on the Miami Heat staff and I am in charge of getting our guys motivated and prepared. That is not something I want them to find out until this is all over. Now, let's understand when you've been to the finals three, five times and you've only lost twice. That is a really good record for the Miami Heat. Let's also keep in mind three of those. Oh, excuse me. No, not three of those. Two of those championships were LeBron James. One was with Shaquille O'Neal. Well, the Lakers currently have LeBron James, and there is no Shaquille O'Neal in this current league. So we will definitely be in for a treat. Now, the best seasons, the best seasons, best records, the best records. The I'm not going to do that. If you follow basketball, you should just a little bit. If you like the sport, I am almost sure you were aware of the 1972 Lakers, the 69 and 13 Lakers, 84% on the season, 72, 1972. And if I'm being honest, looking back at a lot of the uh, point totals back then, especially when there were no three point line. I don't think there was any defense either, but that's another conversation for another uh, episode. Best season for the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat 2013 went 66 and 16 for 81% on the season win loss. Worst seasons. The worst season for the Los Angeles Lakers was not as long ago as we wish it was. In 2016, the Lakers went 17 and 65 for a total of 21% for their win-loss ratio. In 2008, the Miami Heat went 15 and 67 for 18% as a win-loss ratio. Listen, I just want to say as a sports fan, it would plague me to sit through an entire season and watch my team win less than 20 games. It would hurt so bad. I'd still show up next season. I'm still a fan. I'm not a bandwagoner. Uh, if you know my teams, I've been sitting through losses for the Lakers, and now here we are. Um, been a Patriot fan my whole life, and almost sure we're going to be sitting out. Nah, I'm not sure we're going to be sitting out, but I don't think we're going to be as much of a shoe in as normal. Probably end up in a wild card. Nah, first round guarantee, but I'm not sure we'll make it out of the first round. And I'm just being honest. Now, as far as these numbers go, when you come to wins and losses, again, if you are a fan and you sat through a 17 win season, which means 65 losses, or if you're a fan and you sat through a 15 win season, which is 67 losses, there's no way your team made the playoff. So you don't have to worry about it beyond that. But in my opinion, your best hope, like you pray that that is a tank year before tanking was illegal because tanking is now illegal. Plus, there's things that are put in place where it doesn't work as well. You'll tank and still get the 14th pick. So you might as well play your best. However, before you could tank and pretty much be guaranteed the number one spot. And unless these were tank seasons, which the Lakers season, if I remember correctly, I don't think it started as a tank season, but by around game nine, we were pretty sure it was going to become a tank season. And the Miami Heat, I vaguely remember this season as well for them. Um, I think that started as a tank season for them that year. I really do. But I'm not a Heat fan. So, of course, I think it started as a tank season. I had no stake in it. So when you have those kind of things going on as a fan, what you're not thinking about is what has my team done throughout history? What is my team plausibly going to do in the future? Because I believe with all things, you have to look back to see what's coming, right? Especially with a franchise or a corporation or a business, things that are large, large entities, they have to work in a schedule. They work in a, in a cycle, excuse me. So what has worked before, they are willing to try again. An example. I gave you the best and the worst. I gave you the finals wins and the finals losses. So let's talk about our all-time records, right? The all-time records 
for season and the all-time records for playoffs. I'm going to put them together today. Now, well, not exactly put them together, but I'm going to rattle them to, uh, in the same statement. The Los Angeles Lakers have won 3,385 games in 72 seasons, and the Los Angeles Lakers have lost 2,301 games in 72 seasons for a total of 60%, 0.595, 60%. The Miami Heat on the season, the Miami Heat have won a total of 1,300, excuse me, did I say on the season? Not on the season, franchise all time. The Miami Heat have won in their season 1,338 games in 32 seasons. And the Miami Heat have lost 1,229 games in 32 seasons for a total of 52%. Now, you have a team winning 60% for their franchise career. You have a team winning 52% for their franchise career. Let me just be very clear for those seasons when I say there are a bunch of teams, not a handful, not a small handful either, that are definitely in the 40 and 30% ratio. So, these are great teams. These are great uh, things to look at and get a gauge for what your team is up against and what your team can do. If I'm going just based off of that alone, I would think if these two teams meet four times a season, um, it's probably still going 3-1 on average for the Lakers, but the Miami Heat are walking away with one game a year. Easily. I just, I, I, they have the chance to win every single game. And that is something we have to be aware of as fans that every, every professional team, even the ones that we don't care for, even the ones that we aren't fans of, believe me when I tell you, they have a chance. They're professionals. So when we get to our playoff series, or excuse me, our playoff all time uh, uh, records, this was. It was pretty cool for me. I thought it was nice, right? So remember, 61 playoff appearances for the Lakers, 21 playoff appearances for the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat and their playoff records have won 136 games and lost 103 games to the tune of 57% for the Miami Heat playoffs. The Lakers playoff record, the Lakers have won 450 playoff games and lost 299 playoff games to the tune of 60%. So the Lakers as a franchise are 60% on the season and 60% on the playoffs. The Miami Heat as a franchise are 52% on the season and 57, or excuse me, yes, 57% for the playoffs. These are teams that are gonna come and play and if you blink, don't, not, don't put your guard down. Don't run the wrong play. Everybody runs the wrong play. There's broken plays. This is part of the game, right? But if one of your guys, and I mean, this could be your 11th guy off the bench. He doesn't get as many minutes. If he doesn't show up in full force with either of these teams, you're going to lose. No, 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 not you can lose. You are going to lose. So. My thing when I did the research for this was realizing Hall of Famers is a very, 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 very important thing when it comes to athletes or, or excuse me, athletics, franchises specifically. How many Hall of Famers has your favorite franchise produced? How many Hall of Famers has your favorite franchise passed up on? That is an incredible, incredible, incredibly disappointing question when you really think about it, including mine. And, and I'm a Laker fan, and I can still name you a couple where I was like, man, how we pass on that? So what I took the time to do was to find out exactly how many Hall of Fame players and coaches each of these teams had. Now, I know some people would think, oh, that's easy. Not as easy as you think, but it's fairly simple. But you want to make sure you have accuracy, it's precise accuracy. So the Miami Heat have a total of four Hall of Famers throughout history. 
Now, you were considered a Hall of Famer based on the team you played for. Once you were made a Hall of Famer, then you were just listed as a Hall of Famer, and you're listed as a Hall of Famer on all of the teams you have played for. Retired numbers is a little bit different. A team has to retire a specific number for you. So when we talk about Hall of Famers, the Miami Heat have four player Hall of Famers and one coach Hall of Famer. The coach Hall of Famer is Pat Riley. The four Hall of Famers from the Miami Heat, and I'm sure there will be a fifth one very, very, very soon in Dwayne Wade. You have Gary Payton, Alonzo Mourning, Shaquille O'Neal, and Ray Allen. Those are your four Miami Heat Hall of Famers, along with coach Pat Riley. Now, that is a 32-season Hall of Fame list for the Miami Heat. In 72 seasons, the Lakers do have to consider the Minneapolis Lakers, who had, I believe, a total of four or five um, Hall of Famers, which are on this list, and the Los Angeles Lakers, which have the other 22 Hall of Famers. So the Lakers have a total of 27 Hall of Famers, there's a few you know already, right? Magic, Shaq, Kobe, right? Kobe got inducted uh, this year right after we lost him. Wilt, Jerry West, the very first superstar to ever play for the Los Angeles Lakers, and I believe their first team leader also, George Mikan, which, never mind. Another episode. I might do a Mike in episode. Now, you also look and you had four. Co- well, excuse me. Again, those are the ones I'm going to name. There were plenty, 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 plenty more Laker Hall of Famers. However, let's also look at coaches. The Lakers has have four Hall of Fame coaches, and none of them are Phil Jackson. That I know somebody's ear just said, wait, what? None of them are who? None of them are Phil Jackson. So the Lakers four Hall of Fame coaches. Phil Jackson. (laughs) I had to get your attention right. So the Lakers four Hall of Fame coaches are Bill Sharman, Phil Jackson, John Kundala, and Pat Riley. So here's an interesting thing that some people may not have known, and that might have been an interesting fact for some. Pat Riley is a Hall of Fame coach with the Miami Heat, and then he just moved into the front office and gave Eric Spolster that job. And he also was an amazing coach, and I'm willing to say he won a ring here as well in Los Angeles. So Pat Riley not only is a great GM, he was also a great coach and a notable player as well. That is a basketball legend. Hint, hint. It's coming soon. So when you get through the Hall of Fame list, after you talk about your Hall of Fame players, your Hall of Fame coaches, you start asking yourself, well, so all the Hall of Famers are revered, right? Like they're they're all accredited by their team. Every, every Hall of Famer, you know, they get a spot in history with their squad, right? Well, yeah, maybe in the books or on a plaque, but not everyone has their number hoisted to the top of the rafters. Not everyone gets the privilege of you walking into an arena, gazing up to the skies and saying, oh, man, that guy did play here. Loved having him on our team. Everyone doesn't get that. But there are quite a few people who do. And sometimes that comes down to how much the city loved you, how much the organization loved you, and how much reverence you get in the basketball world in general. So let's start with the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat have a total of seven retired numbers. Two of those numbers are of players who never played for the Miami Heat. One of those two numbers are of a player that never played basketball professionally. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, retired numbers are a sign of reverence. So if your number is retired by a team, it is about how the fans felt about you, hands down. That is where it comes from. 
Okay. So the Miami Heat have seven retired numbers. I will begin with the players. The number one for Chris Bosh. The number 32 for Shaquille O'Neal. Remember I was saying numbers are retired by certain teams. The number three for Dwayne Wade. The number 33 for Alonzo Mourning. The number 10 for Tim Hardaway. Now, in reverence, Miami Heat also retired the number 23 from Michael Jordan's con contributions to the game of basketball. Now, for the city of Miami, they also decided to retire Dan Marino's number. 13 is a number that is not worn by NBA players in, in on the Miami Heat, to my knowledge, because it is a retired number, unless it is allowed. That number belonged to Dan Marino. And if you don't know who Dan Marino is, just Google him. I'm not even going to be rude about it. Just Google him. But... What I think is really cool about that before I move to the Lakers retired numbers is it sets a standard for retired numbers aren't solely about basketball. They're about love. They're about the city. They're about the family, the organization that is there and what it means to the people that contribute to their uh, maintenance, their maintaining their ability to be in business. I thought that was really cool to learn those things. Now, the Lakers have a total of 11 retired numbers. And to my recollection, they're all former players. Nothing wrong with what Miami did, simply stating what L.A. did. <clears throat> now, of course, I'm going to start at the top of the list for me. The Lakers have 11 retired numbers. The number eight for Kobe Bryant. The number 24 for Kobe Bryant. The number 13 for Wilt Chamberlain. 22 for Elgin Baylor. 32 for Magic Johnson. 25 for Gail Goodrich. Sorry. <laughs> 52 for Jamal Wilkes. 33 for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. 34 for Shaquille O'Neal, remember, teams retire numbers. So yes, a team can retire his number in Miami, which is 32 when he was in Miami, and retire his number here, which was 34 when he was uh, on the Lakers. And I believe the Phoenix Suns might have retired his number as well, because I believe his number was 33 when he was down there. Back to the LA Lakers. The number 42 is also retired for James Worthy along with the number 44 for the logo, Jerry West. Now, the Minneapolis Lakers has a banner for five of their players that are recognized, as well as Coach Kumla. Now, there was something else that was contributed. Now, as I said, numbers, the only numbers retired in the, for the Los Angeles Lakers are of players. That's not the only reverence that was given. We don't only recognize our players, but only our players' numbers were retired. In LA, we had a guy who just had some of the most amazing commentary and, and broadcasting type of language. And I grew up kind of just like, wow, this guy's, <laughs> I guess every, I actually thought every arena had, had a chick hern. I really did. When I was younger, I, I assumed every team had a chick her to get older and realize now nah, it was just us. And um, that is the broadcaster that the Lakers lift. Uh, it's a, a banner with a microphone on it for chick her. Um, also, if you ever get the chance to visit Los Angeles, go to the Staples Center. There are uh, there are statues of former players and uh, there's a statue of Chick Hearn. It's all really cool. And again, another one of those things that I'm kind of like, oh, does all of the arenas have something like this? And then I go to different places and I'm like, no, not all. Well, a few a few have some really cool stuff, but not everywhere. So as I have journeyed now, catch you guys up where I am. 
We've talked about our all-time records. We've talked about the Hall of Fame players that have played for these franchises. We've also talked about retired jerseys while we've mentioned rings, records, and appearances. Now, after you've gotten your rings and your appearances and you've done all the work to be put in the rafters, you think to yourself, well, are there some guys that maybe should have gotten to the rafters that didn't get there? Certainly. Every team has what I consider a group of great players uh, or yeah, great players. Like every team has a list of players that weren't quite stars, but if you didn't play them, you probably wasn't winning. Um, an example, Lamar Odom, Derek Fisher, uh, Meta World Peace. Um, I just named Lakers. I'll name a few. Miami Heat, Karan Butler. Well, I think Karan was a star. No, Karan was considered a star down there. But uh, Udonis Haslam. Hey, I'll just say him and let it go. I won't even say anyone else. Udonis Haslam, right? There is something about that group of guys that doesn't get recognized and does the job. They help these guys get these next awards I'm about to name. It is them who get those awards for these guys. These guys will be the first ones to tell you. But I had to just mention the guy, the unmentionables, because without them, I don't think we even have a game to watch. Without them, I don't think I'm sitting here going over these numbers, because how do you get assist if you don't have a solid guy to score for you? And that's not the star per se. Somebody who's not looking for the limelight, just trying to do their job, right? So let's move to MVPs. MVP, 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 right? Sorry, I get excited. So the Lakers have had a total of eight MVPs, over, uh, season MVPs over time. Those were Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who won the award three times. Magic Johnson, who won the award three times. Then you have Shaq and Kobe, who each won the award once. Now... Yeah, I'm not even going to mention that. <laughs> Robbery, it happens. The Miami Heat have a total of two MVPs throughout history, both of which belong to one LeBron James. Finals MVPs are a little bit different. Now, the Miami Heat have a total of three finals MVPs, two of which belonging to LeBron James, one of which belonging to Dwayne Wade. The Lakers have a total of 12 finals MVPs. Again, with the amount of finals we appeared in, even the ones we lost, I personally think that's a little bit of a low number. Um, considering we won 16, we only have 12 finals MVPs. Well, hey, listen, Miami won three rings and they have three finals MVP. So who'd we give the other four to? Just a question. I don't know if I can answer that one. And I'm not sure if that's emotional, but the finals MVPs, I loved this list. You have Jerry West who won one. Why one? You have Wilt Chamberlain who won one. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and James Worthy also went home with one finals MVP apiece. However, Magic Johnson went home with three finals MVPs. Shaquille O'Neal went home with three finals MVPs. Kobe Bryant went home with two final MVPs. Now, we know one of those finals MVPs for Shaq and Kobe was a co-MVP, which was still mind-blowing. I think till this day, it's still like, man, co-MVP, huh? They they found a way to recognize both players. I thought that was pretty cool. Looking back as an adult, I almost feel like, hey, so wait, who got the participation award there? But at the same time, I do remember watching them win that. And I, if I had to choose, I wouldn't have been able to. So co-MVP it is, right? Co-finals MVP it is. But once we get through the MVPs, and as you see, we're working down. 
right? Usually we're working up. We work up to the playoffs. We work up to the big numbers. We work up to the finals. I mean, the finals and the rings, but we're working back. And there is a firm reason. So now that we've gotten through our MVPs for the season and our finals MVPs, let's discuss some awards by number, just by number for these franchises. How many of these awards has the franchise won over time? So we have the Defensive Player of the Year Award. Two Miami Heat players over time have won that. Only one Los Angeles Laker has ever been given the Defensive Player of the Year Award. The Los Angeles Lakers have had one sixth man throughout their tenure. The Miami Heat has never had anyone bestowed with a sixth man award from the league. The Miami Heat have never had a have never had a player win the rookie of the year. I think the closest they would have they could have gotten would have been Dwayne. No. Maybe Tim. More or less Dwayne. Um, but he played he he came in the same year as LeBron. So how do you fight that? How do you fight with that? You don't. You just all right, fine. So the Miami Heat have never had a rookie of the year. The Los Angeles Lakers have had one rookie of the year. It was not Kobe Bryant. I just want to make that clear because I know some people are going to, oh, yeah, Kobe, right? No, wasn't Kobe. So moving on from that, scoring leaders. Score, again, we're looking now at these smaller things, these in-season awards. What has been accomplished to get to all of those big awards we were naming earlier? The Lakers have had seven scoring leaders. The Miami Heat have only had one scoring leader. The Lakers have had seven rebounding leaders throughout time. The Miami Heat have only had one rebounding leader throughout time, which I don't even have to look. I am almost sure that was Alonzo Mourning. Assist leaders. The Lakers have had a total of six season, uh, uh, yeah, six season assist leaders, excuse me, throughout their time. Whereas the Miami Heat has never had an assist leader, but I want to note one of those assist leaders for the Los Angeles Lakers was this year's LeBron James. That's pretty impressive. Just my opinion, my opinion. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. So with no assist leaders and also no steal leaders for the Miami Heat, I was a little interested because those, those two categories, in my opinion, on the floor, they're polar opposite, but they're almost synonymous in statistics. When you have a team who's getting a good amount of passes out and assists up, they understand how other teams are going to pass it. They're typically going to have a few steals. Um, but to have a steal leader, I can kind of understand how that didn't happen. Um, but surprising nonetheless, essentially, that, that's all. I was surprised that they have never had a steal leader. Um, an assist leader, again, I can kind of understand that one, but a steal leader, that surprised me. The Lakers have had two steal leaders, two players win steal leader altogether. Oh, I'm sorry, not two players, but in two seasons, Magic Johnson won steal leader. The Lakers have had four players or four different times where a player from the Los Angeles Lakers led the league in blocks. Three of those was Kareem. However, let's be very clear. The Miami Heat have had three, three times where a player from their team led the league in blocks. Now, Coach of the Year awards. The Lakers have had three players, or excuse me, three coaches given the Coach of the Year award, whereas the Miami Heat have only had Pat Riley, the one, be given, <laughs> the one, be given the Coach of the Year award. Coming from there, I was kind of coming down off of some steam, and I felt like after giving those awards, going through the big stuff, I feel like we have enough information to understand the two teams that are battling against each other tomorrow, starting tomorrow, seven-game series, first of four. The highest score for the Lakers. Now, I had to take this down twice for the Lakers. The first – the highest score the Lakers have ever scored as a franchise was 162 points, but that was in 1971. And I thought to myself, let me find something a little more current. So 
in ninth in 2019-2020 season, the Lakers had a total of 142 points in a single game. In the season of 2017, and that will be their highest after the 1971, 162. So let's call it 142 in this era. The Miami Heat in 2017-2018 season, which is also this era, had a, a, a game high of 149 points in a single game, which is their franchise high overall. Now, getting through all of that, coming to the very final thing that I'm look, I was looking at, and these are seasons, this is their season rivalry, their season battles. The Lakers and the Miami Heat have played over the last 32 years, a total of 64 games against one another. Of those 64 games, the LA Lakers have won 37 of those games. The Miami Heat have won 27 of those games. Again, if you ask me, that only says that these are two teams that are coming to fight tooth and nail, nail and bone, bone and blood to the end, zero, zero on the clock until they are told the whistle or the whistle blows or the horn blows. These guys are coming to the stage that they've been waiting for and fighting for and training for their entire lives. With that being said, Let's get to their playoff history against one another. The Miami Heat and the Los Angeles Lakers have never played against each other in the NBA playoffs. The Los Angeles Lakers are a Western Conference team. The Miami Heat are an Eastern Conference team. The only time they will be able to play against each other in the playoffs is in the NBA Finals, which starts tomorrow. The reason they have never played against each other in the past is when the Miami Heat, the five times they made it to the finals, the Lakers were not up there. And of all of the times, the 31 times that the Lakers have made it to the finals, not one of those times where any of the five times the Miami Heat made it there. However, as of tomorrow, history will be changing. The Los Angeles Lakers and the Miami Heat are going to give us a great series Again, I'm going to keep looking over these numbers and keep thinking to myself, how does this pan out? I've also been looking at the season numbers for both of these teams. And I'm who knows? I may do that before the series ends. I've uh, been watching both of these teams. Specifically, these are the two teams I were watching, including the Raptors and, of course, some Clipper games. Um, those were the four teams I saw coming to the conference finals. Um, if I'm being honest, I honestly saw Lakers and Raptors. Um, however, the Raptors didn't make it to the Eastern Conference Finals and neither did the Clippers. The Lakers did and the Miami Heat did. And that's when I knew what I was going to be watching. So because there is no playoff history to mention, I can't add anything on that side. What I can add is this. You have a bunch of players with a bunch of history. Then you have some new players that just seem like they are ready for the job. And if I may i think what we're gonna do tomorrow and for the rest of this series is we're gonna do what one of my personal favorite players all we're gonna see what one of my favorite players always used to say two teams playing hard my man two teams playing hard so this has been the recap of the franchise history of the los angeles lakers and the miami heat simply for giving us some mental candy some some brain candy to prepare us for the NBA Finals of 2020 Bubble Edition. Thanks for coming, tuning in, listening, spending your time with me. Again, please visit us at thinkering.space. Check out any of our Facebook, Instagram. We, we're on all the socials. We're on a lot of the streaming sites. Please check us out. Uh, subscribe if you like what you see. Purchase some merch if you like what you're looking at. Give us some suggestions on things you would like us to add and or things you would like us to stop doing. I appreciate you. Thank you. Hope to hear from you guys soon.